What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Nicey Chung and Benny. I'm here with my co-host, Greg King. What's good, everybody? And you're listening to the Ball Fake Podcast. Before we get into today's video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on post notifications. Share our videos. And make sure you guys are following our social media pages. Um, we will be available on Twitter, Pinterest, and I'm going to make a website for us, too, so you guys can, you know what I'm saying, keep up with that. But... As you can see by the title, today we're going to get into eight NBA players that will have a breakout season in the 2021 NBA season. And I'm going to start it right off with Lonzo Ball. I think Lonzo, he's in a he's in a much more comfortable situation now in New Orleans. You know, he no, he no longer has the pressure of being a savior for the L.A. Lakers and everything. And he has complimentary players around him. He can give the ball to guys like Brandon Ingram, who can space the floor, Zion Williamson in the open court. And... He's also improved his shooting form and his field goal percentages showcase that this season. You know, at one point during uh, Lonzo's rookie season, he actually shot 30.9% from the field, which would have been the worst percentage in NBA history by a rookie since 1979. And that was the year that the three point line was actually introduced. So I'm glad that he wasn't able to, you know, what I'm saying keep that going. But as of right now, you know, last season he shot 40% from the field, 37.5% from three. Um, him stretching the floor out, he'll be able to attack the lanes and become more of a threat at the basket. I would like to see him look to score at the rim instead of turning down those opportunities. And um, but it wasn't all it wasn't all positives last season. You know, early on in the season, Lonzo did struggle. Um, he was actually benched, and that was kind of controversial at the time. But once he was inserted back into the lineup, the Pelicans went on a 22 and 14 run uh, with the opportunity to make a push into the. Uh, postseason and become the eighth seed in that spot but um one of Lonzo's biggest knocks outside of just um him not being the most consistent shooter his free throw percentage does need to improve you know he only shot 56 percent from the uh charity stripe last year and that's a problem when guys like Andre Drummond they can hit more free throws than you so I would like to see him improve on that aspect and with him also looking to get to the line more this season I'd like to see him attempt four to five free throws this season but if he's able to do that he definitely needs to improve that uh free throw percentage but another note too i think with the addition of stan van gundy i think that that could go either positive or negative like because stan van gundy go negative yeah stan van gundy he's one of those guys like i just can't put uh my finger on him just yet like i feel like he is a decent coach but with a with a young core like this, like the Pelicans have, I, I don't feel know like, what he wants to do with all of them. Yeah. I mean, he's talked highly about Lonzo, you know, him being such a phenomenal passer, a uh, willing passer, you know, a guy who would much rather get an assist than put the ball in the basket. But um, speaking of that, I would like to see Lonzo, you know, be a little bit less jump shot happy whenever he kind of gets like lost in the offensive in their offensive plays at times because like sometimes Lonzo whenever they don't have much going on he kind of just you know what I'm saying throws up a, a fuck it shot I like to call him a fuck it shot just because you know it's something that I don't know man it's just not it's just a random shot that isn't good for the offense yeah it's not in the flow I think Alonzo plays better when he's aggressive when he's attacking downhill when he's coming off the pick and roll find his teammates are taking aggressive to the basket but speaking of fan Stan Van Gundy I don't think he wants to make Lonzo a jump shooter and I think that's wrong because Lonzo needs the ball in his hands you just said that he led his team to the eighth spot when he was controlling the controlling the offense and making all the moves so I think they need to get rid of Drew well, he didn't he didn't leave them to the eighth spot I said he had an opportunity Tunity. too but yeah 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 but getting rid of Drew Holiday will help let Lonzo be the the young core point guard and lead that team. And I think having a ball in his hands, you will see a lot of improvement inside of Lonzo Ball this year. Yeah, and as long as him and uh, Zion are able to stay on the floor and be healthy this season, I think that will definitely Dynamic help. Dynamic duo. That, that will definitely help Lonzo's case for, you know what I'm saying, being a breakout player this upcoming season. But my next guy is Michael Porter Jr. out uh, from the Denver Nuggets. You know, he came off a great postseason run. He, he he didn't put up the craziest numbers in the world, but you know he was definitely effective. He was an X factor. You know he averaged 11.4 points per game off 38% shooting, not too bad for a rookie. And he showcased some great outings in the bubble seeding games. You know he actually had a few 30 point games, which was definitely eye opening. But uh, he will have a much larger uh, role heading into next season, which will be beneficial towards his development. You know, now that he's got some confidence in a legitimate role as Denver's third scoring option, I think Mike Malone will look to put him in more positions to score the ball. You know, he actually was a little bit frustrated during the Clippers series because he felt like he did, he wasn't 
in enough situations that for him to put the ball in the basket. But um, you know, him and Mike Malone, they didn't actually see eye to eye earlier on in the season. They kind of got into a few disputes and everything. But um, Malone, he he stuck with Porter and he became a vital piece uh, to their offense, and it, that showcased in the 2020 NBA playoffs. But with him being a lengthy, a lengthy three-level scorer, opposing the te- opposing teams will struggle containing him on the perimeter, especially him being listed at 6'10", 218 pounds. You know, I would like to see him bulk up and add muscle this offseason, but his smaller frame, it won't hinder him too much as he grows into his body throughout the years. But I'd like to see him develop more of an IQ. You know, sometimes he, he makes a few boneheaded plays, which is, you know what I'm saying, it's a little acceptable for, you know, rookies and early in their career. But I'd also like to see him develop more of a mid post or face up game. I think that would help expand his game offensively. You know, um, he's already a capable knockdown mid range jump shooter, but I'd like to see him operate 15 feet away from the basket facing up against smaller forwards. And on another note, Porter has a high ceiling. You know, he's been compared to Kevin Durant due to his size and prolific scoring ability. But I think he's more of a Joe Johnson. But as long as he stays healthy, I think Porter has the opportunity to become one of the best forwards of the decade. So look out for him this upcoming season. And another guy I want to get to, um, he's starting to become a household name. Tyler Hero, the first year player out of Kentucky, he had a phenomenal rookie season. You know, similar, similar to Porter, he was an X factor in his team's postseason success. Hero actually became the youngest player in NBA history to score 30 points in a playoff game off the bench. That's absolutely phenomenal. He also scored the most points by a rookie in a conference finals game, 37 points against the Boston Celtics in, I believe, game four. I'm not sure off the top of my head, but this is a guy that you can rely on definitely in pivotal moments. Even in the rook- in um, the regular season, he actually had a game winner against Philadelphia. So this is, this is somebody you can lean on. But he's actually shown that he can do a lot more than that. He's not too bad in the pick and roll, but I think he could definitely improve in that aspect of his game. And uh, Miami's playing style will allow him to excel offensively. Now, what what should Harrow be expected to look like next season? Well, this will be determined by whether or not he will start or come off the bench. I'm not sure if Miami wants to insert him into their starting lineup and, or, or, and give him more scoring opportunities, but I think he will in ex- excel in either role. But the last guy I'm going to get to is John Wall. After making five straight All-Star game appearances, he, you know, he suffered a ruptured Achilles tendon and hasn't played since December of 2018. He looked great in workouts and open court runs this offseason, and this is actually going to be his first season playing 100% healthy. But um, this is big because he hasn't played a full season since 2014. Uh, the last time we saw a wall, he averaged 20.7 points per game, 8 ass- 8.7 assists, and shot 44% from the field, and was arguably a top five point guard in the NBA. His, spo- his explosiveness looks like it's going to be back. His jump shot looks improved, and it-, it also looks like he's been working on his three ball. That was one of his biggest knocks, and it- that'll be a huge difference maker because um, teams were able to sag off him back in 2018. You know he only shot 30% from three, and... Another thing, too, Wall will look to prove everyone wrong and give Bradley Beal a reason to stay in Washington long term. So those are my four breakout players for this upcoming season. And my my three breakout players, I have Gary Trent Jr. He plays for Portland Trailblazers. But during the bubble, he showed that he can really shoot the ball and really help his team out and and play a key role on his team. During the eight-game stretch, he he made four-plus three-pointers and he showed on the defensive end that he can get after and slow down your second or third guy option on your team. Yeah, he's the definition of a three and D guy. Exactly, and I think that I think I think that with his role that he has on the Portland Trailblazers, I think that he will become a 10, 15 point scorer alongside Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum on that wing that they definitely need for a third star in that team. So look out for Gary Trent Jr. in the future because he is a great, like nicely said, a great three and D guy, and I can see that. He, he can be a huge impact for their team. But the next person I have is Steph Curry. Steph Curry, we know that he was a unanimous MVP. He was just in 2016, just so dominant for that 73 and 19. He averaged 30 points. Like this dude was balling, bro. He was balling. And I think a lot of people are counting out the Warriors right now and forgetting about who the fuck Steph Curry is. That dude's a dog. He's a great shooter, best shooter of all time. If you're talking to some people, I think that he's a the best shooter of all time. Good point guard. But 
when you look at the Warriors, it starts with Steph Curry. So I think him coming back from this hand injury will definitely show how good the Warriors will be. I think everything will run through him, him and Clay. So I think if Curry comes back and healthy, I think that he could potentially win an MVP. Because if you look at the MVP race, they're not going to give it to Giannis again for three times in a row. Harden's already won. LeBron's not going to get it again. And I think Luka's got one more season. Luka's got one more season. So I think that Steph Curry can definitely win MVP this year, especially if he comes out and, and gets the Warriors in the top three, top four in the West when right now nobody's even predicting them to even be in that slot. So I, think I think if he does get like a big free agent this year like Giannis, that may hinder him from – yeah, accomplishing that. Yeah, but, okay. but we'll just find out. We we'll just have ourselves. to see. And my last person is Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant also came off an injury, and we ha- we know Kevin Durant is a pure scorer, bro. And the, again, he's on a team that relies on him, bro. Yeah, he's got Kyrie, but we don't know where Kyrie's head's at. So I'm focusing on KD. Everything runs through KD. KD can pull up, knock down any shot. He can three level score. He can get to the paint. But my thing is, KD just needs a. He needs to be that glue for the team. He needs to make sure everybody rallies around him and say, "Hey, this is my team. This, if you guys get on my back, I got you." He's gonna be, he's gonna be the p- person that's gonna lead them to the East. And I think that KD is a natural. He can easily average thirty point, thirty points in his sleep. Can get to the spot. I think KD would be a huge role for the Nets next season. How they will be in the West. I mean, in the East, and how they be in the East playoffs. So look out for KD too. Yeah, they'll definitely be contenders in the entire NBA. But uh, thank you guys once again for tuning in with us. It's now episode 12. We appreciate all the love and feedback that we've been getting. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. Turn on post notifications. And outside of that, it's your boy, Nicey Chunga Benny. I'm here with my co-host, Greg King. And we out. We out.